Hey guys, Ed Hubs, owner of Full Blown Customs. What we're going to do today is we're going to flame this PT Cruiser. Now the customer brought this to me a couple days ago and we kind of laid out a design. And um, we came up with a design that's going to come from the headlights. We're going to do flames and they're going to be beveled edge. And they're going to come from the headlights and go into the doors. Now, you've seen in my other videos how I prep everything to get it ready. Um, basically, I'm taking all the, the squirters off the hood. Or actually, no, we're not doing hood on this one, excuse me. We're doing the fenders and the doors. So we'll be removing the mirrors and the door handles and all the accessory pieces that are on the car in order to sand around them and have a clean job. So I'm going to get right into this and I'm not going to explain too much on the um, prepping part because I sell videos that explain all that. Um, how to airbrush your ride uh, tells you that. Complete guide to paint your bikes. Um, there's, there's several videos I sell on my website at fullbloomcustoms.com that explain all the prep work. That's not what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do a set of flames, transfer them to the other side, and do the bevel edges. So let's get started. Well, I've just laid out everything in eighth inch blue fine line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some three quarter inch tape and I'm going to start going around the outside edges. Now, a lot of the tape I use is half inch, three quarter, and two inch. So if you notice when I lay out my flames, I'll lay it out where I know that three quarter inch tape will go right between there. Okay, yeah, you can, you can lay transfer paper over and cut it out. But a lot of times I'll outline it with three quarter inch and it's a lot faster if you keep in mind when you're laying out a set of flames that if you got a half inch gap you can put a piece of half inch tape in there three quarter two inch it just saves a lot of time speeds up the flame job makes you more money but before we start laying this out with tape I'm going to explain to you a couple other things now to get this flame to look the same on that side of the car there's a couple different ways of doing it one we can take a piece of paper uh, like 36 inch paper Lay it across, line it up with this line all the way down. There's a style line right there as a guideline. Lay that on there. Take a crayon on top of the paper and sketch over where the flames go. And that will that will make this line, where the tape line is, show on the paper. From that point, we can take a pounce um, wheel, trace around it, and that will leave perforated holes in there that we can use chalk powder to use on the other side. Now, that's one way of doing it. Or pounce powder, not chalk powder. Sorry about that. That's one way of doing it, or how I'm going to do this one because there's so many curves and stuff in it, I'm going to freehand it. And what I'm going to do is take a couple measurements where the ends of the tips go. You can measure from here up to where the top of the tip is, and I'll measure from, uh, you know, you got a point right here. You can measure from right there to where the belly is. And I just put a little piece of tape on the other side, and I know that's where everything curves. And I'll walk back and forth and look. It takes a little bit longer, but sometimes it doesn't. I, I can lay them out pretty fast doing it this way. Laying this flame out right here took 10 minutes. So the other side, probably half hour, trying to go back and forth duplicating it, and then we'll go from there. This one I'm talking about using the paper. I'm just going to use a piece of 12 inch paper right here, just as a demonstration. You're going to put the paper on. I'm using a dark blue crayon, and then you just start rubbing it across, and you can see where the lines are. You can see where all your tape lines are right there. You can see exactly where your flame's at. Now from that point, I'm going to lay this on a piece of sheetrock, and I'm going to go around it with a spur wheel. Now as you can see, I got this set up on a piece of sheetrock. Now you can put it on a piece of cardboard also, but this is a spur wheel here. And as you see, the wheel right here has little teeny burrs on it. And what I do is I'll run it on this line, try to stay as close to this line as you can, pressing hard. What it does is it perforates holes in the paper. And then from that point, I'll show you with pounce powder what it does from there. Now I've got the design right here, and I'm going to use some chalk powder. I'm using white, but I want to show you, as you look through these holes, when you flip it around to this side here, you can see that there's lines right here and this perforates holes through it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this up. This is not my exact design, in fact the flame is going backwards, but I'm just using this as a demonstration. You're going to take your powder and you're going to hit these lines like this. 
and then lift it off nice and easy. And you can see the line right there, and that's what you would take your tape and follow that, that line right there with your tape. Something I forgot to show you is this is what is called a pounce pad. And here's the company down here that you can buy it from. Now you can buy this also from coastairbrush.com. That's where I buy all my products. And when it opens up, this is a nice little pad here that's soft. And when you hit it, all the chalk comes through it. Or the powder. I don't know why I keep saying chalk, guys. But this is where it pours into the top here. You just pour everything in there. Now before I go ahead and lay out the flames on this side, what I'm doing right now is using a cleaner from R&M. It's 909 and it's a water-based cleaner. And I like to do that because it just really lets my tape lay on the panel really nice. It takes all the residue off. If you've ever used it, you'll know what I'm talking about. As you can see, start out with my first measurement here and my second one here. Now what I what I'm doing is I measure from a point down here up to where that's at. That's where the belly is going to be. So I know that my first one comes out and rolls about right here and then comes up and ends about right there. And then this one, actually, I did that wrong. This has got to come down a little bit. And the reading that's got to come down is right there is where the belly's at. So I know that. And that's where this goes. Now what I mean by the belly is where this is going to turn right here. And if you notice where this comes up, where this rolls up, that sets me up to bring in a belly right there. Now if this was flat, I wouldn't be able to do that because it just wouldn't look right. Now something I do when I hold my tape, see how I kind of just let it lay in my hand right here? Instead of holding it up like this and putting your finger down and pressing hard like that where it stretches the tape, if you just lay it there and turn the tape back towards the um, edge that you want it to cut, I can just lay it here and just pull it out and roll it. Then mm. right back up. And then we know where our other line goes right here. And we end it right there. As you can see, I got it all masked up here. Now what I do is take a razor knife and cut right down through the middle of the gap there between the front fender and the door here. And I'll cut down a little ways here also. What I'm going to do is tuck those back in and then I'm going to take pieces of tape and fold them over inside there so there is no blow through that goes back up onto the um, vehicle itself. So let's say this was a candy job that you were doing and you had, you didn't cut these and tuck them and paint went back underneath and got back up on your candy, you'd have a horrible mess trying to spot all that in. So, just as a precaution, I cut every single one of them and tuck them all. Well, from this point, we got about six hours into the job. I went ahead and took the bumper and headlights out, door handles, mirrors. We've laid out the flames, masked everything up. Now, from this point, I'm going to go in and mix up a fine silver. I'm not going to use a coarse silver. Um, I'm using diamond paint on this one. And I'm going to go ahead, you don't have to put sealer down on this um, OEM finish. This is just a standard OEM finish on a stock car. So basically what I did is just sanded it with 600. I scotch brighted the edges. We uh, used wax and grease remover, uh, water-based cleaner, cleaned it off, taped it up. Now I'm going to go over one last time, check all the edges, make sure everything's down good. I'm going to spray uh, probably two coats of silver on until it's covered. And then we're going to go back and do the beveled edges on it. Now using my Wada Eclipse, it's an HP-BCS. I'm going to take and do a light coat of white across this, and then I'm going to start doing some highlights, and I'll show you here. Using about 40 PSI. Okay, now I'm going to start doing some highlights. Some brighter spots here and there on it. 